let's continue taking a look at Game Maker. All right, we found ourselves back in Game Maker over here, and uh, oh boy, I I was so excited. I couldn't even wait to look at too many things. I looked at barely anything, but if during this video I basically run into any walls, then I will be looking stuff up uh, way more than basically previously. Although to be fair. If we just take a look at, well, what I've created last time, um, yeah, we can run. We have the possibility to click this and basically set it down anywhere, and we can walk with this guy. So top-down movement, we got an object that we can click, an object that follows the mouse after we've clicked it, and also an object that follows the player, which to me is absolutely freaking fantastic that I was able to do that in just the last video, and this time... I just want to continue playing around with stuff. The first thing I want to try is to try and, well, change the image right here. So I want to, well, e edit the image. Oh, wow, that's actually pretty cool. We can edit the image right here, but I was thinking about was actually, I wanted to, let me actually just get the tank movement in here. So this is the tank movement. So those are going to be four different sprites over here. And let's see if I can, well, basically make it so that they are, they are different sprites. So... That's going to be uh, probably an edit, I would assume. And the question is, can I like split it up so that it uh, recognizes that each of them are a singular thing? So I can... Okay, that's not quite what I had in mind. Okay, let's go back over here. Import. Ah, you probably want to resize this. All right, so I looked it up and it, it, you have to do it a little bit differently. Okay, so basically we just want to create a new sprite right here. That's going to be a... This is going to be a new sprite. And this is going to be our tank movement and i then want to edit the image and i actually wanted to import something so we want to import a strip image that is what we want to import it's going to be the tank movement right here and there we go so basically you can see how much i can do this is going to be four frames four frames per row uh, and the width is going to be 24 by 24 bam i'm going to set this up right this convert it yes please and there we freaking go. It does it on its own. That is so good. Okay, that is actually way easier than I expected. And if I were to play this, there you go. Now, of course, this is absolutely ridiculous. It should be like one frame a second. If that, I mean, okay, maybe like, maybe like six or something like that. But like uh, six is, I think, maybe, maybe four. Let's see, four. Let's do five. I think five frames a second is pretty good for this. With that, I guess I have an animation. So what happens now if I were to... Well, assign the tank, the tank movement sprite. What's going to happen is probably that it's just going to continuously play. Yes, it is. It's going to continuously play. Now, first of all, that actually looks pretty good. I'm actually like fairly happy with that. But we now continue and ask ourselves, well, how do we change the sprite? To be honest with you, I really think that this shouldn't be difficult to do. So basically, I just want to maybe have an event Mm, I'm going to use the step over here. So I'm going to step in here. I'm wondering if I take the linear velocity, if this is something or not. Because it could be the case that if I change the X, that the physics system doesn't get note of it. But we can just try it. Why not? Let's just, let's just, uh, let's just try it. Uh, so that would be uh, the flip. Um, I want to flip this. I want to get the... So let's do it like this. Let's say the physics velocity is bigger than... I mean, I guess zero. Then what I want to do is I want to... Flip the sprite. If it's more than zero, then I want to image x scale equals to minus one because now we're moving left. And else I want to do image x scale is equal to one. Uh, let's see if this does it. If not, that's fine as well. But let's just see. Oh, well, that's not quite. <laughs> oh, that's right. Wait, wait, wait. It's not, it's not, it's not. It's not one, it's nine. It's not, it should be nine. There you go. Okay. So it doesn't do it because the velocity isn't changed because we're right now just changing the X and the Y value basically when we're moving. So we're not even using the physics system, which is fair enough, right? What I can do is I can get the, I can get X uh, and I can do minus X previous and that should do it or the other way around. One or the other. Let's try it out. So yeah, there you go. So that is going to flip him around. Okay, that's fair. The reason why it flips them around like that is because the sprite, if we go into the sprite, this is the, no, 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 that's fine. I want to go into the actual sprite, the tank movement sprite right now. They, yeah, it's top left and we want this to be middle center. And this is going to be middle center for all of them. That's awesome. So now when it flips it around, it's going to flip it around the center, which is going, which first of all has him completely, uh, completely gone. What? <laughs> that is unexpected. Oh, visible. I, I accidentally clicked visible and then it was invisible. Okay, that's that's very fair. Okay. 
Okay, now it's visible and again, and if I walk the other way, look at that. Look at that! Okay, that's pretty good. Now the only thing I need to do is when it stops, right? So when there's no movement at all, then I want to change to the other sprite, just the tank. So doing all of this in the step over here, probably not the right way to do it. But once again, I'm as I'm just figuring stuff out, yeah, I'm just doing stuff. So this is definitely not going to be the most optimal way of doing it. But if, you know, x minus previous x is not null, then we know that some sort of movement happened, right? In the lateral direction, let's say. And then I want to change to basically change to movement or to tank movement. Else, right, would be, hey, you know what? We've just stayed still. So what we can do is we can change the other one. So let's say a sprite. Can we just sprite add? We can sprite assign, which would be an index. And we also need to get the sprite. We can delete a sprite. I don't really want to delete the sprite. I don't think that that's right. Sprite assign, um, index zero. And then the sprite would be tank, which is the resource. Um, And then here it's going to be zero. And this is going to be tank movement. Listen, I mean, might as well, right? Inconsistent naming. Okay. Oh, it actually recommends me a way to name this. Okay, that's fair. We'll not... Right now, I'm not going to go for the convention over here, how, how to name things, but that's that's fair. I'm, going forward, I will, I'll think about that. But overall, this seems... um Yeah, this seems pretty pretty straightforward, right? I mean, that that's going to probably... Probably going to do it. I, I don't know about the uh, index. The index of the sprite to be copied. Yeah, it's going to be zero. Because we only have one sprite for this object. So it should be the normal sprite now? Nope, it's not. Oh! <laughs> That's nice. Oops! I may or may not have accidentally changed it for the wrong object. Wait! No, it does it. It changes it for the object in terms of instance right here? That's That's the way that it works? Wait, what? Okay, that is crazy talk. Player tank dot sprite index? Oh, look at this. I can just do it like that. Okay, that's much better, but also, that was kind of funny. <laughs> okay, now I think it should work, right? Okay, so it almost works. If I, um, if I don't move, I'm, 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 I'm standing, and if I do move, I, I'm nothing, okay? It does get tank movement, though, so it, it doesn't know that this exists. My gut tells me that if I call sprite assign every frame or every step in this case, that it's going to basically override the fact that it's that it wants to play an animation and i think that's not good this is going to be um is there an equals method uh, let's just do this the equals uh tank wait no, no, equals tank movement dot uh this would be the name i want the name i'm just gonna do this for just a moment uh, if this is unequal then i'm allowed to change it if it's if it is the same thing so if the sprite is already tank movement i i'm not assigning it anymore so let's take a look i'm nothing and then i'm not actually assigning the um the sprite anymore so we're moving right here and the sprite name that it already has is not equal to tank movement then i want to set it to the tank movement sprite not quite what i had in mind apparently also because i'm in the same thing i can just do sprite index equals and then the the actual thing that we have so this would be tank movement there you go and then same thing here. Bam. And then this is going to be tank. And then I should also be able to actually do this. Wait a second. Tank movement unequal or sprite index unequals tank movement. There you go. Yeah, of course. And that should do it. It does. Let's go. That's freaking awesome. Now, the only reason why this is weird is because the tank. Pretty sure if I go into this. Haha. -ha, the this should be in the middle center or in the center middle. And all of a sudden, look at this. Look at this. We got a freaking animated guy over here. Look at him go. Oh my god. That's animation done? This easy? Also, by the way, I will once again say this is probably not the optimal way to do it. There's probably a thousand better ways to do this. I would imagine something in like the draw over here where, you know, it like the, the thing gets drawn. Something like that. But you know what? Oh, maybe actually not. But regardless, that to me is freaking crazy. The fact that I can just do it like this and it, I mean, I basically have a very straightforward animation already. That's big. So, I mean, while we're at it, why not go absolutely like wild over here to be more or less in health area? But then I'm, I'm thinking about this and I'm like, wait, why would I do that though? I don't need to do that. The collision is already built in, right? I don't think I need this as a, as a remove child. Yeah, because I could just add the collision event right here. I could just say, hey, what happens if this collides with this? What are you talking about? Okay, sure. 
health. It's a built-in variable, by the way, as well, which is interesting. It's five. It's going to be an integer, because why not? If this collides with an asteroid, health minus equals one. And look at this. Now I'm going crazy. Asteroid dot destroy. Okay, destroy asteroid. Probably destroy method. Instance destroy ID and then an execute. So this would be the asteroid. Uh, and then the second one is the execute ID, which is a uh, false. We're just going to put in a false. When an asteroid hits the player, the player takes one damage and the asteroid gets destroyed. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's, that's what happened. I don't, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but that's, that's crazy, man. I still have a little bit of an issue weaving it all together. But right now, as of this moment, this is incredibly powerful. Like, I'm just, I'm still baffled by this. And in this case, so this would be the moment where I'm going to try to do like a health thing. So this could be a health script, right? So this could be like, this is like a um, health helper. I don't know if that's how you would do it, but why not? Health underscore helper, right? And what you would do is, can I just add like multiple functions to this? Or do I add a function right here? Function X. Because if I recall correctly, this is the this is the constructor for it. And then this is like an actual function that you can then call. So what you could do is you could so you would add in an ID or like the resource itself. This would be like damage health. You pass in the the object and how much damage it takes. Yes. And then you'd say underscore ID dot health minus equals damage. Underscore damage. And then you could duplicate this and make a function. Oh, wait a second. And then you duplicate this. I am making a function which is called heal health, which does the same thing, but it just underscore heal. And then it does plus minus plus equals underscore heal. Am I understanding it right? <laughs> am I? This is right. And instead of doing it like that, then I also wait a sec. Also, what I can then say is like, if underscore ID dot health, I can just all, do it all in this helper script is smaller or equal to zero, right? All of a sudden, you know what? I just want to, Print it out. Actually, no. Frick it. I'm going to destroy this guy. Uh, this is instance destroy. Instance destroy. And the, the thing that's going to be destroyed is the ID here, right here. Yeah, done. That's it. That's all I want to do. I mean, I guess. So I go back to my player over here. And instead of doing this, right, I'm just going to say health underscore helper dot. Can I call this? No. Can I make this a variable helper? A var e helper equals this. And then I can call this. I can. So then I could say player damage by five, which should destroy the, which should also destroy the player. If this works, I'm going crazy. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Okay, let's go. Finally, we've got something. Unknown object cannot be resolved. Okay, that's fair. Okay, I think I'm a little bit, I, I, I think that you should just do it like this. You should do it outside of the function. Because like, I mean, it didn't, didn't make any sense to me anyway, because it's like, why would I define it in the functions? But it did say that this is the constructor. But I mean, I guess that's fine. Also, damage underscore health and heal underscore health. Fair enough. But then now, I don't even need to do this. I can just say damage underscore health, right? And then it just works. Does it work like this? Let's take a look. It does. Oh, well, that's cool. This is once again a big question for the game maker folks out there, if uh, if any are watching. So I understand it correctly that when I create scripts right here, the way that I would create scripts is basically always taking, always having like global functions, let's say, that I'm creating that can act on objects that I'm passing into those functions. Would this be like one way to do it? Would this be the right way to do it? Would this be a horrible way to do it? I really... Like, genuinely, any comment is incredibly appreciated. So far, I feel like this system works really well for me. And I can sort of, I can see the, I can see the matrix starting to, like, unravel in front of me. Like, sort of understanding how this works. This is really freaking cool. Wow, that is awesome. This is basically just, this is basically collision. We've done collision. We've, we've made a, like, I mean, basic health script right here, right? That, that works. I'm insanely impressed with what Game Maker so far was able to do. Uh, that to me is absolutely amazing. So what I would really appreciate are some of the comments from the Game Maker folks. Once again, any sort of feedback, any sort of, you know, criticism, constructive criticism over here that might be interesting for me to pursue in the next two episodes. 
Like, I barely even know what to, what to try. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely think of something. But uh, yeah, please do leave me a comment so that I can also incorporate that in the next videos. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one right here. Once again, on the left, you can continue watching the Game Maker series as soon as it's out. And on the right, a completely different game engine as well. Hope to see you in one of those videos. Until then. So, yeah.